We're shopping, it's the pre-spawn. I believe this is a six inch. And we're talking clear water, pre-spawn fishing. Sounds big, but it's really not. What am I tying on? I've got that tied on at home right now. Top four techniques, lures, spots like the party. All right, today we're at one of my favorite local tackle shops, Hammond's Fishing Center in Cumming, Georgia. But man, we're, we're shopping, it's the pre-spawn. We're talking February, early March. I'm gonna take you guys along with me. We're gonna talk about clear water, cleaner water, pre-spawn fishing. And the pre-spawn is that transitional period between where bass spend their wintering holes and then where they spawn. And the travel and the pathway that, that they take to get there. A lot of you fish this time of year, you know where you're going, you know where you're fishing. But today I'm, I'm talking about what's on the business end of the line. What am I tying on? What do I rely on? So we're gonna go in here, I'm gonna take you along and I'm gonna give you my top four techniques, lures that I rely on that are always on the deck during the pre-spawn period. So come on. All right, so we're talking clear water. We're talking, uh, you know, three, four, that might be three to four feet of visibility for some or even cleaner. Um, but that's kind of where I draw the line between clean and stained is around two to three feet of visibility. And so we're talking about a bass that will use their eyesight a lot more um, in, the, in those situations. So we're gonna talk about my favorite lures in those situations that appeal to that sense of eyesight. Um, and we're gonna start by talking about swim baits. You know, there's no secret, one of the most popular swim bait is the Kitek. Love the Kitek. But in different scenarios, in the pre-spawn, when these fish start to make their move, I like the bigger meal. And yeah, they make some five and six and seven inch versions now and they're, and they're good but I still like the hollow bellies. I still fish, fish these hollow bellies on a, on a jig head, on a swim bait hook, um, in grass, in the cleaner water grass. I love a five to six inch hollow belly on one of those, um, like a flashy swimmer hooks. You know, it's a swim bait hook and it's got a, I'll show, I'll show it to you here if they've got any. Um, but right now we're looking at uh, these, you know? The old school paddle tail, Tennessee shad, just a grayish, got a little translucency to the belly. And they've always, always, always been good to me. This next one excels when you're slowing down, when you're slow rolling. You can use the hollow bellies on a jig head and make them go faster. You can rip them out of grass with a swim bait hook. There's a lot of things you can do. Um, but when I'm talking about fish that'll come up, sometimes pre-spawn fish in the afternoons especially, they'll come up and get on a piece of cover, something to warm their eggs up. Um, and this mag draft's awesome for that, for, for cover fish. This is one of the most popular swim baits there is, and it's, it's because they, they catch them. It's about a six inch. I believe this is a six inch. Sounds big, but it's really not. You know, bass will just come up and just inhale these. You, you fish them slow, slow and steady. But, you know, these swim baits are a great way. Got to get an eight inch while you're here too, because they, that's going to require heavier tackle, 25 pound test and a, and a big broomstick of a swim bait rod. But uh, catch bigs on that one. Oh, and since we're here, my guess is that there's going to be, so something like this. So you'll take that hollow belly and you'll thread it on right there on the screw lock and make it weedless. And then you've got a little kicker, kicker blade like that. So for you grass guys, this is an awesome way to get a really big bite in the, in the spring. You put it, put it with a five or a six inch hollow belly, slow roll it, pop it out of the grass and hold on. All right, come on, let's, uh, now we got to talk something else. So that was number one, swim baits probably my favorite way to catch a big fish in clear, clear water in the pre-spawn. Now, number two, this, this category is a jerk bait. This is gonna be early pre-spawn. By that, I mean 
fish that aren't necessarily up super shallow yet, but they're in their transition that you might catch them off of points, you know, out there in five to 10 feet of water, maybe even deeper if they'll swim to it. The key is the clear water, they can see it come a long way. And I love a jerk bait when the water's still in that, uh, does that 50 degree zone. I think the pre-spawn period, you could really cover between 50 and 60, 48 and 62 degree water temps um, as it's warming. Um, but, but with a jerk bait, I love it early pre-spawn, you know, right now, you know, beginning of February, this is going to be the, the deal. And, you know, I come to the most popular is probably the Mega Bass. I, I throw some other, other brands too, but um, I really like the muted colors this time of year. Those soft, you know, that's got some translucency. Let's let's just pick a couple here. Um, that's got too much flash on it. Right here, here's a classic right here. There's only one of them left, imagine that. That is Pro Blue right there. As you can tell, it's just muted. It's got a little translucency to it. These are the type of colors I like this, this time of year. And then, um, so that one has like that, so, like, cri like clear translucency right there. And here's another one to, that's just more cloudy. I don't know if you can tell the difference between these two, but this is very similar. They both got kind of blue backs and the color right here, that's like matte. So they call it their matte finish. So that's their matte skeleton shad. This is a pro blue, but what you can see the difference in, that's a, like a, clear translucent as I'd call it and this is more like a matted both of these I would call muted colors these are the kinds of colors I'm reaching for in clear water pre-spawn pre-spawn time of year not getting too flashy not getting too bright not getting too hard colors um, you know if you've ever seen a cold fish or caught a really cold fish that maybe just came up shallow they don't have a lot of coloration to them the bait fish are going to be the same way. They're going to have those muted colors, not a lot of flashy scales yet. We're not quite there. Um, so let's look at some other uh, other jerk baits that I throw. And so another one that I picked up, really started throwing the last couple years, is this Stunna. I've been throwing it, you know, w since it's come out. And the thing I love about it is it just, you can get this thing a little deeper than your average, you know, I don't know what to say, this is a shallow, you know, these jerk baits I'm grabbing don't have the long bills. So we're not talking about jerk baits that dive really deep, but the, the, these ones, you can get a little bit deeper um, with them. This is a stealth shad. Again, it's got a little chartreuse line in it, but muted, muted colors, I really like that one. And on a cloudy day, that's when I'll throw, I still like the more muted style colors. I don't want a bright white, but I will throw something that's whitish. But this is just a classic right here. This is one of the best colors on a cloudy day in clear water. Um, this, this will work in stained water too, but we're talking about clear water um, when, it's, when it's cloudy. They call it hanky panky, but that's just like a, a muted white with a little bit of a faded orange belly. And uh, I mean, that's always in the box right there. I've got that tied on at home right now, guaranteed. All right, now we're gonna transition to number three. We talked about swim baits, we talked about jerk baits. Those are two categories of baits that I will always have tied on, clear water, pre-spawn fishing. Now, we're gonna talk about something that's more grass centric, but a lot of times you don't need grass, but it, it's definitely a classic grass bait where the, you know, even on dirty water fisheries, your grass is gonna filter the water, make it cleaner. And it's the lipless crankbait. And you can't talk about the lipless crankbait without talking about the OG, the Bill Lewis rattle trap. You know, and I, I like Old Faithful, man. I like, I can't, I can't help it. Where is it at? Where is it at? They've got so many colors, it's ridiculous. Right here, just a red crawl. I mean, this is, I think they call it Delta crawl. Red, any, anything red crawl. And I really like this color too. I don't know what that is. That looks good. Ooh, this looks good too. Oh yeah. So. 
I just picked up three red baits. It's classic pre-spawn color. Yeah, it works other times of year, but something on your deck has got to be red in the pre-spawn. Even in clean water, specifically around grass, I feel like it helps stand out, you know, and if, there, if bass is relating to a lot of grass, there's a lot, a lot going on sight-wise. Um, so they can feel this, right? This is definitely a vibration bait. They definitely feel in their lateral line. Um, but, uh, you know, I just had a lot, of, a lot of luck in clear water grass situations throwing this and don't be afraid to burn it. You know, I know we're not talking about how I fish a lot of these lures right now, but man, I love cranking these things about as fast as I can over a shallow grass flat, flat in February, early March. And when they hit it, golly, they just knock, knock the rod out of your hands. So can't go wrong with a rattle trap. You can, you can hear the, all the rattles. There's multiple rattles in there. Another thing to talk about is like a knocker lipless. So Strike King has one right here. Since we're right here, they have what's called a two tap. And I'm trying to find a color that I would throw besides red in clear water. Here we go. It's kind of like a smoky-ish chrome. It's not a crazy flashy chrome. Yeah, they call this, I got it right. They call it smoky chrome blue. And this, if I can, I can't hold it without damaging the package, but there's, it's more of a single knock. If I could silence those hooks, you'd be able to hear it, but it's not a, a bunch of rattles. And sometimes that knock, they'll be on that. You almost got to throw both. There, we went through a craze in the lipless world where a lot of guys switched to the one knocker, as, as they call them. And it almost got to the point where so many guys were throwing the one knocker that the old school bunch of rattles were, were like new again and good again. So it's kind of like fisheries will go through different phases. Me, I'm gonna have both. I'm gonna throw both and whatever the fish tell me to throw, I'm gonna throw. But yeah, so that's lipless crankbaits. All right, and now that leads us to number four. So number four is gonna have to do with what we're putting on our spinning rod. Can't fish clear water without a spinning rod. And this time of year, pre-spawn, I will always, 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 always have a shaky head on. You know, quarter ounce for a little bit deeper, three sixteenths ounce. I've even, you know, for these deep spotted bass lakes, I've, I've even gone to a three eighths ounce before. Um, trying to fish, you know, in that 30 feet of water or deeper. Um, man, they've got some that I really, really like here. This is, those are the Neds. Here we go. Rhino head right here. So there's a, there's a three sixteenths. I, li I like these shaky heads. Um, and this is, this is a different shaky head, right? He calls it a rhino head. It was designed by Aaron Martins, so you know it's good. Um, it's got a recessed line tie. Um, I really like this one around like rock when I'm fishing like, like rocky areas. Now when I'm fishing around brush and stuff or just fishing around a dock or just fishing, I like just your standard ball head shaky head. And I, I'm not a big guy, I'm, you know, a lot of shaky heads have screw locks and there are some like a football style head, I would might use a screw lock, something for a really oversized shaky head. We're not talking about right now. That's not what I'm doing in the pre-spawn. I'm, 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 I'm gonna get to the worms that I, that I use in a second, but something like this where you just got a ball head and you just thread the worm onto, onto there. So, you know, I do use both styles um, for my spinning rod stuff. I, I typically steer away from the screw locks. Just, that's just the way I am. There's nothing wrong with them. People throw those spot removers, they're good. Um, people throw those owners with the screw lock, they're good too. This is just kind of how I'm comfortable. I'd use, again, I'd use this more in, this is an eighth. I'd use anywhere from an eighth to a quarter, depending on depth. and. This is more brush, more docks, more just bare bank stuff, stumps. And then I really like this round rock, the rhino head. Um, so now let's go talk about my three favorite baits that I would rely on this time of year that I always have that I would, you know, start with first before I got too crazy with it. Um, the trick worm is just the old staple, you know, in this clear water, green pumpkin, anything green pumpkin. 
is just kind of your natural colors. Green pumpkin blue is something that I love around the house. Um, and clean water, it's just what I reach for first a lot of times. So that's your green pumpkin blue trickworm. And uh, that, a trickworm is just it's not anything specific. It's something you can catch them on largemouth spots, you know, smallmouth even. These guys in Alabama will catch them on the trickworm a lot. And it's a, it's a, just a worm that just pairs well. You can shake it well. It's got that flat bottom. And uh, it's probably one of the first, it's the first or the second worm that I definitely reach to, um, that style of worm right there. Let's go right here and talk about one of my favorites for spotted bass. So the, the clear water fisheries that I fish around here, got a lot of spots, and I like to throw something just a little bit smaller. And this is probably what I would reach for first, and that's a four inch, not a five inch, but the four inch general. Love the max scent. Let's see here. This is a really good one. That's just kinda, I don't know if they just call this brown. And then of course, green pumpkin. I like the, like the party, the green pumpkin party. Spots like the party if you ever need to remember about a, a, a color to pick. Anything with the word party in it with spotted bass is probably gonna work. So four inch general, put that on that rhino head or whatever. And spotted bass are just, you know, it's got the scent already in it. All right, one more shaky head worm. And this is when I want to get in that same kind of four inch size. But with me, I'm weird. Like, I feel like when you're fishing a shaky head, there's times when I'm just pulling it and I don't want a lot of action. And that's when I like the general. And the trick worm you can do both with it shakes really well. But when a fish wants me to shake it a lot, you know, and just kind of hop in the rod, the, the, like a trick worm for that longer six inch worm, that, that'll work. When I get to that four inch, you know, general, I want something with something else that has a little bit of action. And that's when I discovered the Quiver 4.5. And I absolutely use both hand in hand. It's just based on action. You know, if they don't want the general, I'll put the Quiver on, start shaking it and see if that, that'll work. Um, some of my favorite colors. Oh, you can't go wrong with Sweet Carolina. That's got everything you would need for a clear water fishery around my house, that's for sure. Georgia, Carolinas, Tennessee. I mean, just look at that. It's got green, purple. I mean, he could have put the word party in there too. You know, that's, that's a party to a spotted bass. And then of course you can't go wrong with green pumpkin and they've got some pretty good colors to choose from if they're like really bait fish oriented. You got that, that's called hillbilly magic. <laughs> but uh, as you can tell, and I'll pick up the general real quick so you can see the difference here. You know, they're both compact. They're both, you know, four inches. Um, you know, it's definitely my favorite styles for spotted bass in clear water, but don't let me fool you. They're going to catch largemouth too. Caught largemouth on both of them. Again, that is kind of what I what I go to when when they want it slower. When I got a dead stick or just pull. But I love the the tail on this one for for when I'm shaking. You know, and if you're in a pinch, you just you know your tackle store may not have both. So if you just see one of them, that would be the four inch profile that I'd go to first. So. All right guys, so that's my top four techniques that are tied on the deck no matter what when I'm fishing during the pre-spawn period, fishing in those cleaner, clearer water lakes. I hope you guys got something out of that. If you got any questions, leave them in the comments below. Would love to talk with you guys, answer any questions you got. Um, and please give us a like and a subscribe. Um, thanks for helping us build this thing and uh, get off the ground. We're really enjoying shooting these videos uh, for you guys and uh, got some more shopping to do. Shoot the little blind man to